Is it, is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. I like the way it's really clear. I guess I have to charge this light because before it was coming off really dim. I, I, I guess it only lasts a couple of days or something like that. That's still pretty good for a, a USB rechargeable light, I think. Anyway, uh, Futurama. We're on episode uh, 11 and 12, but this is season 7. Okay, so episode 11 is probably one of my least favorites that I've watched so far. Um, so, throughout the series, we've run into a character from a planet called, is it, is, is, let me see if I can say it right, Omicron Percy I-8. Okay, I think that's right. Uh, we ran into him, and for whatever reason, he's going through a midlife crisis where they make mention of it. And he comes back to Earth and finds, um... How should I word this? He finds uh, guidance from Leela. So Leela winds up nagging him, and he, they wind up faking uh, an invasion of Earth because it's pretty much all his character ever talks about and all his wife wants him to do. So they get Orson Welles' head to do it, and you can do your own research on who Orson Welles is. And my basic knowledge is he was a Hollywood director, but uh, some some point in time when radio was king versus like tv and streaming services uh for entertainment and news altogether uh he faked an invasion of earth and people really believed it and whatever whatever so they call on that again and yeah his wife winds up the the alien guy's wife winds up coming to earth and uh, i'm trying to see if there's any lessons in this one but i I didn't see it. Maybe I wasn't paying too much attention. I feel like I was paying pretty good attention, though, because I didn't like it. <laughs> but, yeah, he winds up, um, she winds up coming to Earth, and then, you know, Lila's still nagging on me. You know, you got to do this, you got to do that. Oh, I think the sub story is more important than anything. So, if I'm not getting my stuff mixed up here, the sub story is Fry, uh, one of the characters. Of course, he's still confessing his... or. Is it, what's the word? Professing? Whatever the word is. He's 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 showing all this love for Leela throughout the uh, entire episode. And he's been writing a comic book. And, yeah, he's writing a comic book throughout the whole thing. And he keeps changing it because of, uh, basically because of Leela's opinion. He keeps changing it, keeps changing it. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it comes to a point where the alien wife basically gets jealous of how controlling... Leela is towards uh, the alien guy, and then she's like, you gotta choose one of us, and the only way to some special ritual, and the special ritual is, however you choose, you gotta kill the one you don't want, or whatever. Fry winds up jumping in front of the ray, but for some reason, I think they think the audience is stupid, but for some reason, he gets shot with a, a like a, a ray that's supposed to be a disintegrating ray, but it's just a teleportation ray, but they've already mentioned that earlier in the episode, so when they shoot him, I'm like, oh, I guess, I guess Fry's just gonna come back now. But you know, all the characters in there were making it seem, oh, he's dead, he's gone. But they knew it too because most of them were present when it was revealed that it's just a teleport teleportation ray. So why were they acting like he's dead? I don't know. Anyway, I guess they got caught up in a moment. Anywho, um, talking really fast. I'm still feeling the effects of some caffeine. Uh, let me see here. What else happens? In this uneventful episode. Yeah, I'm just going to call it out. If I don't like it, I don't like it. You know, why Why beat around the bush and try to be nice about it? So, this is a pretty bad episode. Because uh, I can't see any message or... Not message. I can't see anything that I could pull from this episode. I mean, there's relationship stuff in there. But I, I guess... I don't know. It's, mid, it's relationship, midlife crisis stuff. And, of course, Fry's everlasting desire for Leela is uh, presented again in this episode and of course it doesn't go anywhere i guess that was i guess that's what's uh uh ticking me off so much about this episode i mean they've been leading on this uh relationship between these two characters for for literally six or seven seasons now and it just hasn't happened maybe i'm tired of that maybe i want to see it uh my memory serves me right anyway i don't want to uh ruin the rest of these videos i want to make uh but yeah really not that not that eventful of episode oh everything winds out leveling the sub back out too but that, did i talk about the sub story that fry is making a 
comic book and he winds up saving himself or, or sacrificing himself to save Lila. Lila, Lila winds up giving a kiss. I guess I just move on to the next episode. So the next episode is uh, episode 12. Um, this one is quite, quite interesting. So they hit on civil rights issues. Uh, what else did they hit on? They hit on again, Fry's everlasting love for Lila. They hit on that. And they also hit on like, uh, 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 Classism, too. They hit on that, too. So they hit on um, civil rights, classism, Fry and Lila's relationship. Um, so the basic overview of this episode is, uh, it is this is a this is a like a, a look into look into a class structure. So you get a so the mutants are basically on the, on the bottom of the totem pole, but everybody knows. Uh, the the bottom of the totem pole is what supports the rest of it, right? Makes sense. So, the mutants are the bottom of the totem pole. They take care of all the garbage and waste, sewage and things like that. But they have no rights, and nobody really respects them. And uh, Lila's getting pretty upset at this fact because she's at a luncheon with some rich people, different class, who are uh, down talking uh, the mutants, lower class, right? And they make a reference to upper middle class or something like that, which is, you know, whatever that. That's so that's a different conversation because you know there's a gap that's getting like this as far as uh, class is concerned, like lower class, middle class, upper class. Like there's a new there's a new sector like upper middle class is like it's still it's, anyway. Um, Lisa's getting upset about that fact, and Fry with his dim witted self winds up revealing that Lila's. Uh, actually a mutant and they're like wait a minute she's not an alien but you know it's illegal for mutants to be on the surface so then she gets kicked oh i guess it's about uh not only classism it's about um immigration too because they did they deport her <laughs> to the sewers uh and then come to find out they were harboring harboring a mutant so then they all get kicked down there for a two-week sentence or something like that but by the time we was down there you know she's still pretty uh pissed off because she's looking at the conditions and the way they're treating but she gets to reunite with her parents of course which is always good um let's see what else happens what else happens in this episode um gets deported comes let me see what gets deported uh oh yeah um uh um Lisa's kind of pissed off still and, you know, Fry's trying to apologize to her, but she's not having any of it. And she's like, if you really feel so sorry, you know, take a swim in this uh, uh, mutant lake and turn into a mutant, this, that, and third. Fry's like, nah, I don't even want to do it. And then, okay, it progresses a little bit. And then Fry starts to feel really bad about the situation. So he winds up going in there and he comes out horribly disfigured. Uh, later on in the episode, we find out that he wasn't horribly disfigured. He was stuck in another mutant's uh mouth <laughs> that other mutant happens to be well i guess I, I left this part out but throughout the whole show there's a a rich uh rich older lady who was on what the the land uh, the biggest land going ship gets a reference towards the titanic and uh how it sunk through the asphalt or something like that and uh I'm trying to make sense of it <laughs> And uh, that happened to be her husband, and he got mutated, but he's been down there for this whole time. Blah, say, blah, say, blah. Um, so Fry winds up being okay this whole time. And then he winds up getting a kiss from Leela on the cheek because of his uh, sweet actions. I think I'm missing something. Am I missing something about that episode? No, I think I touched on most of it. Yeah, t I touched on most of it, I think. So there's, you know, classism and, uh, uh, like, Xenophobia, I guess, is a word. It's more, it's more readily readily recognizable. Xenophobia is a word <laughs> people can associate. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Afraid of uh, immigrants, but in this case, it's mutants. And then they're talking about civil rights, and then uh, which I, you know, whatever. That's whatever. And then um, classism too. They're talking about how different classes uh, treat one another. But like I said, that's a whole different conversation for completely. It's a completely different conversation for a different time. Let me slow down my words. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now, if you like me bumbling and stumbling around these reaction videos, I have 
some on Breaking Bad. I have some on The Wire and Futurama. And, of course, I think, yeah, I just did a movie. Uh, and I'm going to do another movie right now. <laughs> so, if you like it, go look at those and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>